I'm on top of the world. Really, I'm on top of my tower. Trucks hooked up, ready to go fishing. Today, I'm sharing my checklist before every trip. It's showtime. I'm getting reports. Big fish, 80 to 100 miles off San Diego, heading to Ensenada. Pay attention. We're going to talk about it. Hustle on fish. Let's go. I always find the fish. Always. Good morning. Good morning. Today, I was going to go fishing. We got some weather and I'm going to hang tight, but I thought I would just explain my workflow and share my checklist. Now, everyone doesn't need a checklist before they go fishing, but I do because most of the time I'm taking clients out. They're paying big money to fish and I cannot forget nothing. So what I'm going to show is I think we got the top 10 things that I take and we're gonna hit into my office and we're gonna go on the computer, look at a few websites that I check out before every trip. But it's so nice up here that we're just gonna kick it and start with number one on my list. And for guys that have boats out there, let me tell you why having a checklist like this is important because uh, whether it's Bear, Alberto, or a couple other guys that fish with me, they get to my house and the checklist is in the garage and they start loading the boat. I'm grateful to have guys and friends like that. So having a checklist is great for just the extra help. There's been times where we've been down the street about right there and we're going over the list and we're like, oh, we forgot the gaffs. Go back and get the gaffs. So having a checklist is super mando Tory. Box container number one, balloons. I gotta make sure that that box has at least 10 balloons and clips, some duct tapes, rubber bands, staplers, staples, small zip ties, ice cream sticks, balloon, and string. Uh, that's my kite setup, my kite box. And if you're missing one thing, you're pretty much screwed when you're 50 miles offshore. Box number two, ringed hooks, a double trouble, four mackerel rigs, four sardine rigs. But the main thing I'm looking for is I have my rigs for my frozen flyers. Every trip I want to have at least 10, five to 10 ready to go. And I also have the hardware to make some more if I need to. But nowadays I'm actually rigging my frozen flyers before I even leave. So I got frozen flyers rigged, ready to go, iced up. All I got to do is pull them out, hook up the swivel and we're in the game. Box number three, media. So this is where I keep all my camera goodies in the media box. We got three GoPros, four extra batteries, chest and head mount, chargers, cables, uh, phone, tripod, and the Zolio. Gotta make sure you have the Zolio out there. For those who don't know what that is, it's this little satellite beeper that lets you communicate with your fellow anglers offshore where you don't need phone service, you just need satellite service. Box number four, batteries. Uh, I got three reel batteries for the uh, electric reel, uh, crimson dykes, 300 pound, 400 pound mono for rigging, electric reel cables, measurement tape. You know, we keep that measurement tape so we could tape out any big prospect. That being said, I got a contest today. And before I forget, let's get right into it. Anybody who could guess the weight of this tuna right here? It's gonna get a free hoodie, just like this, the one that I'm wearing. Leave your answers in the comments. I'll find them and then I will find you. Number five, the Mad Max, of course. Uh, thinking about the Mad Max, I want to let you guys know, like last year, Mad Max wasn't active as the prior year before. You know, last year was a game of the frozen flyer and I'm pretty happy that it was because I know how to work the frozen flyer pretty good. It's kind of my foundation and saving on gas, but the Mad Max don't, 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 don't sleep. The Mad Max is a killer. But what I learned last year about having the frozen flyers is the multiple hookups. Yeah, in the Mad Max, we've got multiple hookups. We got two at a time, then we can shoot out a frozen flyer. But what I learned last year is you could just be so much more productive with just 
frozen flyers, being ready for any situation. Box number seven is the gyros. Uh, can't leave home without the gyros. Uh, it's essential to have those out there. Um, for guys who are just starting, I recall working the gyros in the beginning. It wasn't a really comfortable process, just kind of getting used to working gyros. So don't be discouraged if it's your first year with gyros. Your second year, you get better. And then after a couple of years, it's second nature, man. You can work those gyros. I could go to fit, I could go like 10 knots sometimes in the tower and be an autopilot and be just screening the, the perimeter with those gyros. So you will get better as time goes on. Box number eight is the spread bars, which is not in the box, but it's just number eight. Spread bars on every trip have to go. I take at least three, and I always have about six ready to go in the garage, but six is all we need. And I typically pull those out when other stuff is not working. If Frozen Flyer is not doing justice, I know there's fish out there. Mad Max ain't doing the trick. Sometimes uh, these fish might be a little smaller, and if I see they're a little smaller, then I'll pull out the spread bars, and you never know. We've caught over 200 pounders on the spread bars, but if you don't got spread bars in your checklist, you're slipping. Uh, number nine is the kites, okay? I like to take at least three kites. Uh, when I was starting off, guys, I took five kites, and I recall, you can ask my buddy Eric and Roman, we destroyed three kites in one trip. I had the fourth kite like a champ. We got bit and came home with fish. So with that being said on the kites, we want the uh, bent bud rod. We want at least four rail rods. We want two Stella's rigged with stick baits and poppers. Um, let's go to number 12, from the freezer. On this list, I have kill bags. Again, I have a pack of G flyers three, three packs, that's minimum for me. I might even do four packs. Ice, uh, right now we wanna take 180 pounds of ice to start. I also take some blocks of ice, we call it Mexican ice because it's a way to save money. But I keep four blocks of ice with 180 pounds and it's pretty efficient, you guys. This year I do plan to take an extra kill bag and keeping it on the bow and just maybe taking 300 pounds of ice just to be super efficient. Uh, I got some miscellaneous things that we got to take. Uh, let this airplane pass by. So with that being said, that's a lot right there. I'm still gonna take you to the computer and check out a few websites that I check before every trip. So let's check it out. Okay guys, we're on the computer and I'm gonna tell you about a few websites. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sites that I like to go and check out. I like to monitor while I'm not fishing and before a trip, I could take all these websites and generate a good plan of where the fish are gonna be, not including the intel that I get from guys that fish. But I'll start with the forecast, foremost, the most important. And I like to just to go, to, I like to go to marinegov.com. And right now we're looking at San Diego and it's showing Hazardous weather conditions. Let's move to the next. I also like marine traffic, uh, AIS. I could come catch boats slipping with their AIS on and kind of know more or less where guys have been fishing, uh, track the fleet a little bit, and other boats. Uh, another website is Tides for Fishing. This is some good information right here. Kind of gives you a little bit of everything. I like to check it out for moon phases and it kind of predicts the best fishing, the best days to go fishing. Of course, we got Fish Dope. Fish Dope is showing some tuna being caught over here by the catcher's mitt. That's 90 to 160 pounds. It's kind of the reports that I'm getting from the guys in Mexico. So this is about a good 100 mile run. So if I was going today like I was planning to, if we had good weather, I would just straight head to this zone. And my game plan would be to check out some other spots here, pending on uh, some chlorophyll and temp breaks that I check on rip charts. This is a paid subscription that I like pretty much. And a little advice I could give you guys is 
as you start to hear reports, even on fish dope, if there's fish being caught here and they're giving you numbers, I like to come over here on rib charts and kind of find out why they're here and try to match what I'm seeing here to the bites on fish dope and get a game plan. You can also check chlorophyll here and I do the same thing. I'll match chlorophyll, I'll match temp breaks, I'll match where fish are being caught and then I kind of just go work those zones. I also like to check out 976 Tuna because they always got the latest and greatest reports and sometimes you can hear boats here reporting about how they're doing and sometimes you could come back here to marine traffic and you can kind of find more or less where they're at fishing. Uh, videos that I like to watch on YouTube is Phil Freeman Adventures. He always has he always has great reports for us, and you can learn a lot just by watching Phil. Also, I like to watch uh, Bloody Decks, the Southern California Bite Fishing Report. This is a great report. I think it's every Friday with this guy right here, Eric. Great stuff. And with that being said, guys, I think that's kind of my whole workflow. I want to know what you guys want to know more in depth about. So with that being said, guys, that's my checklist before every trip and a quick 10 minute summary. If you guys have any questions or want me to, to dive in into any topic, please leave it in the comments and I'll be happy to debrief and talk more about it. Um, I'm starting to learn my audience here on YouTube and a lot of you guys are just guys that want to do this or who just started doing this and a couple of experts who just been sneaking in to see what I'm saying. With that being said, it's a wrap. Much love, hustle and fish. Let's go. I always find the fish. Always.